Yeah, thank you, Peter. Uh, so, um, uh, so uh, Kawe is going to be uh, discussing fair and accountable natural language processing. Uh, Kaiwei is an assistant professor at the Department of Computer Science at UCLA. Uh, his research interests include uh, designing robust uh, machine learning methods for large and complex data and building uh, fair and accountable language uh, processing technologies for good applications. Uh, he's published in NLP, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. He's been uh, widely cited and covered by news media such as Wired, uh, NPR, and MIT Technology Review. Uh, he's gotten uh, awards from conferences, including uh, EMNLP Best Long Paper Award and KDD Best Paper Award. Uh, he obtained his uh, PhD at uh, University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign Urbana uh, in 2015 and was a postdoc at Microsoft Research in 2016. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll uh, let you take the, take the floor, the highway. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Uh, so it is uh, my pleasure. I'm very happy to have the chance uh, to be here to talk about my research. I have a several uh, fruitful collaboration with the USC ISI. And uh, this is uh, some of the other topics that I was working on at the UCLA. And I hope this can foster a more collaboration and discussion afterward. And uh, because of the time, I cannot go through a lot of the details, but uh, if you are interested in my work, then you can go to my website and we have all the paper, a video, and also some demo uh, you know, in my website. Okay, so, uh, so let me start it. So uh, as we can see, uh, now it is a very exciting moment uh, for AI researcher uh, because uh, uh, there are a lot of the questions we was, uh, think they are very difficult in the past now we have some methodology that we can achieve a pretty amazing uh, result. So for example, uh, for uh, the reading comprehension, now the model can even uh, achieve superhuman performance. So this is in the sense that uh, the performance of the model is actually uh, better uh, than uh, the, the annotation agreement on the benchmark data set. But uh, the problem is, uh, I, I think most of people have seen this before, that uh, although we got a very amazing result on the benchmark data, but when we're trying to use this uh, model uh, in a practical problem, then we find that uh, the re reality is pretty sad. That the model uh, suffer from uh, several different kinds of the problems, and uh, that is uh, kind of uh, 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 motivate uh, several research that I've done at UCLA. So over the last uh, few years, uh, we have identified a certain limitation of uh, AI and NLP models and proposed several techniques uh, to try to make them more accountable and more clear. So for example, uh, in our prior work, uh, we have shown that we can design an algorithm that uh, to attack an uh, NLP model. So that is in the sense that uh, we can replace a word uh, to its synonym, and then the model may change the prediction between two sentences by saying that the sentence one uh, is entailed the sentence two to say uh, these two sentences are uh, contradict to each other. So uh, several study, including some of uh, ours, uh, also show this problem appear in several different NLP system, uh, including in question answering or in uh, a lot of the text uh, classification models. And we also find that uh, not only the model prediction uh, would be likely to be changed by the small perturbation in the input, but also the internal representation uh, can be pretty brittle. So for example, uh, we look uh, into uh, this uh, contextualized word representation model that we're trying to learn a factor to represent the word and its context. So the common belief is that this uh, contextualized representation model uh, can capture pretty well the meaning uh, in the sentence. So that uh, we may say that uh, if we, I have uh, two sentences that they are paraphrased, then uh, the same word in these two sentences should have a pretty similar uh, representation. However, in our experiments, we find that uh, sometimes uh, the uh, representation uh, for the same word in two paraphrased sentences can be actually different uh, from two word with outside meaning in two irrelevant sentences, like I show in here. 
So like uh, uh, the, the result I show here, uh, if you look at uh, this sentence, it is a very small window and I have a large suitcase. And actually the contextual representation we learned uh, for the large and small has a, a smaller distance and then uh, the, the word bigger uh, in the first uh, pair sentence pair. So that means that uh, this kind of model, although uh, they can capture pretty well the meaning of the sentence, but uh, they also uh, may be brittle that you can easily, uh, by swapping uh, the sentence uh, order, and then you can perform certain type of attack. So besides, we also find that uh, a lot of uh, uh, NLP model are pretty biased. So this is a, a collaboration uh, with uh, uh, people in the ISI that we showed that uh, the language generation uh, is biased. So if you give a prompt word, like the men work as, or the woman work as, and the model will try to uh, generate the rest of the sentence, then as you can see here, that uh, the sentence uh, generate uh, associated with men and women or black and white are quite, uh, are quite, uh, are quite different. So I don't want to uh, read this sentence, but uh, uh, as you can see, uh, that uh, you don't want to have a system that using this kind of language generation model as a big end, as uh, this uh, may cause in some PR issue. And we provide a um, more systematic analysis and also propose some quantum matrix, uh, quantification matrix in our paper. So uh, I want to show another example uh, in the co-reference resolution. So in co-reference resolution, uh, we want to identify what is a pronoun or the uh, phrases in a sentence that refer to. So for example, if I give you a, a sentence like this, then the model can uh, successfully identify uh, the pronoun his is refer uh, to the entity precedent. However, we find that if you simply uh, swap uh, the pronoun his to another gender pronoun like her, then the model is failed to identify uh, the female precedent. And we find this uh, phenomena is appear uh, in all kinds of a correlation system, including the rule-based, feature-based, and deep learning-based uh, system. And also when you use a different type of embedding, like a growth embedding or ELMO embedding, uh, it also shows this kind of bias. So of course, uh, this is just a cherry pick example. So you may ask that, is there a way that we can quantify uh, this kind of uh, uh, bias? So uh, we propose uh, to uh, use uh, the window grain schema method uh, to annotate some data in order uh, to quantify uh, the bias in the correct system. So uh, for example, uh, we can generate a bunch of a sentence uh, like the following, that each sentence has uh, two occupation words and one gender pronoun. And the model need to uh, solve this kind of uh, uh, pronoun resolution problem to identify uh, which uh, the occupation that this pronoun is referred to. So for example, here, the physician hired a secretary because he was overwhelmed with a client. Then we will expect the model uh, to associate the pronoun he to uh, the occupation of the physician. So uh, according to this uh, window grid schema, then we can also generate uh, another cases that is very similar to this sentence, but uh, we just changed the sentence a little bit. And in that case, we have a sentence, the physician hired a secretary because she was uh, highly recommended. In that case, uh, she should uh, link to the secretary and based on the semantic of this sentence. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, uh, I uh, basically have a sentence pair that uh, is pretty difficult uh, for the machine uh, to resolve these uh, pronoun resolution problems. And we hope use this uh, to test uh, if the model has this ability uh, to uh, resolve this uh, co-reference uh, uh, resolution problem. And uh, to test if the model uh, is uh, gender biased, then we were going to generate another set of a sentence that basically the same as the previous set, but we just swap the gender pronoun to uh, the upside gender. And, uh, and then we group all these sentences into two groups. So in one group, we have uh, always this uh, gender pronoun that is associated with the occupation that is uh, historically associated with that gender. So like he is associated uh, to physician and she is associated with a, a secretary. And we call this a data set, a stereotypical data set. 
And then uh, we call uh, the other uh, data set that we swap is a gender pronoun uh, as an anti-steel typical data set. So ideally, these two data sets are uh, exactly the same. The only difference is the gender pronoun are different, but the semantic and the syntax of these two data sets are exactly the same. So we will expect uh, the model, if they don't use uh, this uh, gender information uh, to make a prediction, then they should perform the same on these two data sets. However, as you may expect, that uh, the model actually uh, have a very different predictions on this data set. So uh, here uh, I show uh, the result that evaluate on uh, both this uh, stereotypical data set and this anti-stereotypical data set and also show the average on these uh, two data. So this is an experiment on the state of the art uh, correct system at that time, uh, the, the system that using uh, uh, deep learning ne uh, neural network to, to uh, resolve this uh, correct problem. And as you can see that uh, in the still typical data set, the model achieved a very, very high performance by leverage uh, this uh, gender correlation. And the model performed uh, uh, very bad on this anti still typical data set because uh, the uh, association is uh, outside. So the difference is as much as about 20%. And in average, the model uh, get around uh, 63%. So that shows that the model actually uh, heavily leveraged this uh, uh, gender information in making the prediction. So that comes to the question that uh, what kind of a gender uh, bias the model is leveraged when they're trying to make this prediction. So uh, in one experiment, uh, we're trying to reduce uh, the gender bias in the underlying uh, word embedding model. And we show that if we remove the bias in the word embedding, now uh, the gap uh, become uh, much smaller. And uh, actually, if you look at the average performance on both data set, uh, the performance actually improved a little bit. That means that we did not actually sacrifice the performance of the model in order to, um, to get, um, bridge this uh, gender gap. And if you uh, change the training data to trying to make the training data more balanced, and also do some several other tricks to try to remove the bias in the uh, uh, training data of this uh, train correct system, then we can show that we can actually bridge the gap to less than 2%. And in fact, that is not, uh, the difference is not significantly, statistically significant anymore. And the average performance of that model is actually uh, improved a little bit uh, over the original uh, model. That again means that uh, you don't need to sacrifice uh, the performance of a model in order to bridge this uh, gender gap. And I didn't show uh, in this uh, table, but we also uh, analyzed uh, these three models on the benchmark uh, data set on the Conal, uh, uh, Ontonal uh, 5.0. And we find that uh, these three models perform uh, very similar on the, uh, test, on the original benchmark test data set. So uh, basically it means that uh, the model is less biased, but it still maintain the performance. Okay, oh, by the way, if you have any question, feel free uh, to raise your hand or you can also ask a question in the chat. Okay, so, uh, so basically all this is, uh, example I show you uh, kind of uh, reflect uh, the model has uh, some bias and also is a bit brittle. But why we are concerning, why this is uh, uh, important? So uh, I want to uh, share uh, one uh, tweet that I see uh, that a few days before, that uh, this is a, a, a tweet talking about uh, people are concerning an AI startup company that are trying to use this ML and LP technology to intervene the hiring decision. So there is a new company uh, called uh, Predictive Hire, and they claim that uh, they can have an online interview and use a machine uh, to uh, analyze this uh, interview log in order uh, to suggest the hiring decision. So let me use this as a case study and not uh, uh, mean to uh, criticize uh, the use of this technique as I don't know what exactly they did, but uh, basically use this is as an example uh, to pinpoint uh, some common misbelief, the use of AI technique to this kind of uh, sensitive uh, application. 
So uh, first of all, uh, if you look at uh, the, the company pages, uh, they are trying to claim that uh, by using this uh, AI technology, they can finally uh, make uh, the hiring decision without bias. So I, I believe that most people in this room were going to disagree with that, as we know that uh, the model uh, can uh, capture a lot of bias from the data. And this is uh, uh, until this time that it is very difficult to interpret uh, how the model make a prediction. So there's almost no way we can guarantee that the model has no bias. Also, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the company also put a paper on archive and showing that uh, they have a new technology that they can uh, use uh, NLP model to predict the job hopping likelihood uh, using some answer uh, from the open-ending interview questions. So uh, let's uh, put aside that uh, if it is uh, ethical uh, to try to predict the job hopping likelihood of the candidate. So job hopping means that the candidate maybe was switching the, uh, the job uh, in a uh, year or two. And, but let's uh, see that uh, why this is a uh, problematic. So first, uh, as we shown, and also uh, many uh, others uh, shown before, that the word invading can be very biased in the sense that a word invading will capture a different type of association uh, in the data that we use to train this invading. And uh, the model may make a certain type of association for example, uh, you will have uh, all these kind of uh, male were associated with a certain occupation, uh, like, uh, for example, the builder or a computer scientist, and also have a female associated with another side of uh, uh, occupation, for example, a homemaker and nurse. So uh, this type of gender bias uh, may actually influence uh, the decision of the, the hiring. Uh, if you use them as a uh, uh, down, downstream uh, component, we're going to uh, predict uh, this kind of a job hopping likelihood. And uh, in the paper, I, I didn't read through the paper very carefully, but uh, their paper actually mentioned that they try out all these kind of uh, uh, underlying representation model, uh, including the glove and back to fact, in order to, in order to uh, make this kind of job hopping likelihood prediction. And I'm pretty concerned that this type of a bias will go into inference uh, the decision that they finally make. And uh, interestingly, uh, in their paper, they also mentioned that uh, their model is not gender bias in the sense that they look at uh, the likelihood of prediction uh, from their model. And they find that uh, from, for the female group and the male group, the mean of this uh, prediction of the likelihood are pretty similar. So uh, they use this as a, a hint saying that uh, the training model, uh, the, the trend model are not showing bias toward any gender. But uh, is this true? So I don't know because I, I don't have their data, I don't have their system, so I cannot analyze that. But I was pretty concerned that uh, showing uh, the model has a similar performance in the overall data set doesn't mean that the model doesn't have a bias because uh, for different type of occupation, the model can actually have a very different prediction. So uh, this motivate uh, one, uh, uh, one of the research I did uh, recently that we are trying to uh, detect uh, the bias in the local region. So again, I don't have their data set, so I cannot do any analysis on their data set, but uh, we did analysis on another uh, applications that are trying to predict uh, the toxicity uh, of the comments uh, in the online volume. So uh, this is uh, the paper uh, from uh, Google Research uh, a few years ago that they showed that uh, the toxic, sorry, toxicity uh, classifier can be biased in the sense when there is a sentence contain the word gay, then the model will more likely to predict this sentence uh, is a toxic uh, comment. So in that way, uh, you may cause some harm because uh, whenever you want to discuss this uh, gay issue, then the model would break this uh, sentence uh, as a toxic comment. And that will uh, actually uh, harm this kind of a discussion. And also on the other hand, this would be a certain kind of a systematic error that model will have a more false negative rate uh, toward a sentence with certain words. So uh, the reason of that uh, is because uh, in the training data that they use to train this model, 
uh, this is more likely uh, to see uh, the sentence is a toxic comment uh, when, uh, when, when you contain the word gay. So that's why the model will over uh, predict uh, the sentence uh, with the word gay uh, is a, a toxic comment. So uh, in this uh, word, we're trying to ask uh, if this kind of bias also exists uh, for other uh, words uh, in, in, in this data set. So for example, uh, like uh, uh, the sentence contain the word uh, black and white. Yeah, and as you can see that uh, this sentence also are pretty, uh, sorry, this word is also pretty frequent uh, in these uh, comments. So then we want to see that uh, if that also uh, showing certain type of bias. Okay, so uh, we perform a, a, a first experiments that we just apply this uh, uh, toxicity classification model and to uh, the sentence that contain the word white uh, compared with uh, the sentence contain the word black. And we show that the performance gap is about a 5%. So uh, in order to, uh, to know what is this 5% uh, mean, we also do a control experiments that we just uh, randomly uh, split the data set into two parts uh, with a similar population. Uh, and then we're trying to see what is the performance gap uh, we're going to have in this uh, two random split uh, data set. And we find that uh, in that case, uh, the gap is about 2.5%. Well, that kind of suggests that uh, the performance gap between white and black is not very different uh, from uh, the performance uh, gap uh, in the random split. Right, so that maybe suggests that there is no much bias uh, in, in, in toward this uh, 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 race group. However, we find that uh, if you uh, look at some uh, specific topic of the sentence, and, and if you look at some local cluster based on the topic, and then you will see that uh, when the sentence actually talk about the political issue, then the gap is actually as large as around 20%. So that means that if you look at uh, the performance gap uh, in average over the entire data set, you may not see that there is a, a strong bias, but if you look at some uh, local uh, region of the data, then the bias uh, can be very uh, significant. So uh, this experiment is done by uh, have a lot of human intervention that are uh, trying to identify what is a topic and this and that. So then there's a question that can we automatically identify this type of a local region that uh, reflect a strong bias. So we design a clustering algorithm that basically uh, consider uh, two objectives. So on the left hand side, uh, we will have an objective that basically just uh, the clustering objective. So uh, we can uh, plug in a uh, different type of clustering objective here, like uh, uh, k-means or uh, we can use uh, LDA or uh, other, other uh, clustering algorithm. And on the right hand side, uh, we introduce a new uh, clustering objective that we're trying to uh, enlarge the performance gap or other uh, bias metric uh, within the group. So we hope we can generate a bunch of uh, a local group that each of the group has a certain similar feature, so, so they are reasonable local cluster, but uh, they can also show that uh, there is a significant bias uh, in that local region. So uh, we did a very simple experiments and uh, some preliminary results showed that, uh, again, if you look at the uh, average performance uh, on gap on, on the whole data set, they are not significantly different. But uh, if you look at the individual cluster, so here uh, each uh, line show uh, the result in one cluster and the blue uh, uh, circle show uh, the, the accuracy performance of uh, this uh, toxic 30 classifier on the sentence contain the word white comparing to uh, the classifier performance on the sentence contain the word black. And you can see that uh, in the first three cluster, the performance gap are pretty significant. And then we can further uh, run an uh, LDA model to try to understand what is a topic covered uh, in this uh, different cluster. And then uh, as I showed you before, then uh, for this uh, most uh, biased cluster uh, in, in the cluster zero, you can see that this is a cluster talking mostly about a uh, different type of uh, uh, political issue. And uh, uh, for, for the least uh, biased uh, cluster, uh, they are talking about more general thing, then so, so they doesn't show much bias. 
Okay. Yeah, so we hope uh, this cat technique uh, can be used uh, also to uh, uh, other uh, situation in order to identify uh, the bias uh, in the model's prediction. Okay, so uh, next I would like to uh, talk about the bias amplification. So uh, it is a general belief that uh, the bias uh, is only in, in the data and then the model will go into uh, uh, basically replicate uh, the bias in the data and then uh, put them into the uh, prediction. So that is true, uh, but also we find that the model will not only replicate the bias and sometimes the model will actually amplify a such a bias. So that will actually raise a more concern because that will actually form a feedback loop that you have the data, then uh, the data will somehow amplify the bias and the prediction of the system will be even more biased. And then when the user using this uh, predicted uh, result, then that may amplify the bias as well and causing a loop that we will have a more biased uh, data uh, in the next room. So uh, we study uh, basically a uh, general NLP pipeline that uh, basically you have the data and then uh, the model will going to learn uh, the representation from the data and then use this representation uh, to uh, make the prediction. And in many cases, we will also have uh, some auxiliary uh, corpus or uh, some other information that can help to uh, make the decision like word embedding or some pre-trained uh, representation model. And our concern, as I say, is that when we have a bias in the data or in this uh, uh, auxiliary uh, learning signal, then the model will go into amplify such a bias and causing uh, some uh, 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 bad result at the end. So uh, one of the uh, uh, application that we studied before uh, is uh, this uh, vision and language model where I give you an image and the goal is trying to learn this uh, structure uh, uh, description of this image that we want to identify the activity in this image uh, is cooking. And also we want to identify a bunch of a semantic rule like what is the food cooking here and what is the agent and what is the tool used uh, to cook. So uh, one uh, preliminary uh, is, uh, experiment that we find that the model actually has a certain type of bias that uh, if you see the image like this, it is a clearly a man cooking, but the model uh, predict uh, this is a, a woman cooking image. So uh, that kind of raises a concern if the model like over, uh, and over confidence that the cooking is associated with a woman uh, than a man. So uh, of course, like I say, this can be caused by the data that used to train this model is biased. So uh, we analyzed the training data and we find that uh, about one third of the training data is um, in cooking and two thirds of the training data is a woman cooking. So uh, the training data has a certain uh, distribution difference between men cooking and women cooking. But what we concern is that once you train the model on top of that, and now the model actually uh, amplify this uh, uh, difference uh, in the prediction. So uh, in the model's prediction, the model actually show this about only 15% of the image are men cooking and about 85% of the image, uh, the model would uh, uh, take them as a woman cooking. Even though uh, the distribution of a man cooking and woman cooking in the test data set is very similar to uh, the training data set. So that kind of uh, showing that uh, the bias is amplified uh, through uh, this uh, le uh, learning and prediction process. So uh, give, to give a slightly more detail that we are using uh, this uh, visual semantic law labeling system, where on the buttons that we have a VGG network to capture the features uh, from the image, and we have a word embedding uh, to represent uh, the meaning of the word. And uh, we have a, a basically a new network model uh, to uh, combine these two information, and we have a CRF model to make the joint prediction at the end. So uh, because uh, we hope the model can uh, capture this certain association, for example, that you cannot see this uh, spectula that you use uh, to cook this vegetable, but uh, from knowing that this is a vegetable, this is part, then somehow we can entail this uh, spectula as used as a tool. So, uh, so then we have this uh, CRF model to try to capture this uh, joint correlation. And we suspect this kind of uh, uh, 
joint association capture mechanism will also amplify uh, the bias in the data, in the model. Okay, so again, uh, I just show you uh, some uh, uh, cherry pick examples, so you may not believe that uh, this is actually a systematic error. So uh, I, we also uh, designed some experiment that trying to quantify uh, this uh, bias amplification effect. So what we did is that we first uh, define uh, the gender ratio. So uh, the definition of gender ratio is pretty straightforward, that we look at the entire uh, data set. And we count how many times we have the uh, image that read as a cooking, and also the agent is assigned as a woman or man. And then we just uh, uh, count the ratio uh, uh, like this. And then, uh, for example, if you have a six uh, uh, image that is a woman cooking, and you have a three image as a man cooking, and the ratio will be uh, simply one third. And then we draw a figure. So uh, in the x-axis, uh, we show uh, this the ratio that we evaluate uh, on the training data set. And on the y-axis, uh, we show uh, this ratio that we evaluate uh, on the model's prediction. So for example, in this uh, previous uh, cooking example, then we can see that uh, uh, the, the, the basically it is about one third uh, in the training uh, prediction and it's about 15% uh, uh, toward men uh, in, in the uh, model's prediction. So if a model just replicate uh, the bias uh, in the training data, that it makes a similar uh, prediction of a gender ratio in the test time as in the training data, then you will expect that uh, all these uh, uh, different activity and different uh, semantic rule will somehow uh, sit uh, in this uh, reference line that represent x equal to y. But as you can see here, that uh, when I put all each point represent a different activity uh, toward different rate gender ratio, then you can see that uh, actually most of the point are sit within this uh, yellow region. So that means that the bias is get amplified. So for example, again, like a cooking here, uh, now the, the bias is amplified uh, from about one third to now is a 15% toward the band. Okay, so that's what we did uh, before uh, to basically show that if you ask a model to make a prediction, then the distribution uh, the, the, in the model's prediction uh, can be uh, more score uh, than the training data. But we also want to know uh, why that happened. So one of the reasons is because uh, this analysis is done uh, on, top, on the top prediction. So basically this is like a winner take all uh, uh, a policy that uh, if a model even make like uh, this is a 51% more closer to uh, male cooking, then we will assign male cooking uh, to that instance. So of course, uh, doing this type of assignment, the bias uh, will be somehow amplified. But we also want to show that uh, actually in the model's uh, prediction, uh, the probability distribution, it is also biased as well. So we conduct uh, the, uh, further the, the following experiments. So uh, in the previous experiment, I just show you, we do this uh, top prediction, right? So if you have a three image, and then uh, even uh, the model is slightly more believed that this is a male cooking than female cooking, then we will uh, uh, just uh, count uh, this image is a male cooking. But uh, we also are now trying to analyze the posterior distribution. So uh, we just sum up uh, the, the probability that the model assigned to different uh, male, female cooking instance, and then, uh, and then normalize accordingly. So this will represent the posterior distribution uh, of the bias uh, toward the male. And then we can conduct the exactly the same analysis again. And then we show that uh, this is uh, uh, the figure I just showed you before. Originally in this uh, top uh, prediction uh, situation, you can see that uh, the prediction uh, is pretty, uh, uh, the bias is pretty amplified. But now if you analyze the posterior distribution, uh, the, the effect of amplification uh, is less obvious. However, you can still see that uh, most of the uh, uh, activity is still uh, uh, off from this uh, uh, x to equal to y uh, reference line and they are still uh, slightly amplified the bias uh, in, in the training data. 
So here I uh, basically show you uh, uh, the, the red point is uh, the, the activity that is a very far away uh, from the ratio you see in the training time and the green point is somehow within the margin. So they are uh, sort of uh, okay samples. Okay, so that means that uh, the model not only uh, bias amplified due to we use uh, this winner, winner take all strategy, but internally that uh, when the model trying to learn to replicate this prediction, the model will somehow amplify uh, this ratio. And this can be caused by uh, many different issues. It's caused by uh, we use a regularization uh, mechanism uh, to regularize the model. So the model will treat uh, some cases as an uh, outlier and uh, ignore to learning them. And also uh, it is uh, due to a uh, known effect that the deep learning model is uh, poorly calibrated that they may not be able to uh, fully recover the distribution you see in the training time. And, uh, and, and there's also uh, several other related studies uh, in the machine learning uh, literature. Also, uh, people may ask a question that can we just simply just uh, uh, mess out the face of the person or maybe mess out part of the body so that model cannot tell the gender and then we can just solve that issue. However, in another paper, we showed that uh, the problem is actually more complicated than that. Because the model is not only using the face and using the body to predict the gender, but also use many other uh, related objects in the image in order to predict uh, the gender of a person. So we conduct uh, experiments that uh, we give uh, several image uh, with uh, different uh, uh, gender of uh, agents in the image and as a model to predict uh, what is an uh, agent in the image by mass all part of the image. And we find that the model not only look at uh, uh, the face and maybe part of the body, but also look at some other thing. For example, the model showed that uh, the pink umbrella actually has a, a pretty good indicate uh, team power to indicate what is a gender uh, in this uh, image. Same as the model will look at, uh, for example, the sport uh, that the person play uh, in order to guess uh, what is uh, the gender of the person. So that means that all different uh, type of uh, signals are somehow uh, deeply embedded uh, in this uh, uh, prediction model. And this is a uh, very difficult uh, to uh, take out those uh, association uh, when you're trying to uh, make such a prediction. Okay, so, uh, so we see that the model uh, will somehow amplify the bias. So the next question is, uh, is there a way that we can somehow calibrate the model that the model can somehow predict uh, similarly uh, to the ratio we see in the training time, right? Because this is somehow uh, the purpose of uh, we build this uh, training, a uh, field of this uh, uh, learning algorithm. So uh, one uh, algorithm we propose is that we can uh, frame these uh, mitigating bias amplification problem uh, into a constraint inference problem. So we can try to introduce a certain type of a constraint in the test time and then as a model to make the prediction with a similar ratio as we see in the training time. And you can also inject a different type of ratio you want uh, in, according uh, to uh, your downstream application and to inference uh, the prediction of the model. So saying that, for example, you know, in this uh, test data set, the gender ratio for cooking is uh, maybe uh, half and half, then you can also encode this kind of constraint in the inference time as well. So uh, we designed uh, this uh, uh, reduced bias amplification framework that basically uh, we, uh, as I said, we will treat this as a constraint inference problem that uh, we hope uh, the model will going to make the prediction such that the training ratio uh, is very similar to the predicted ratio. So uh, in the inference time, what we are going to do is we're going to solve the original inference problem uh, like here in here uh, in the objective. But at the same time, we will enforce uh, this type of constraint saying that uh, the ratio between the training and test will somehow within the margin. And then uh, or we can uh, uh, model this as a, a constraint inference problem and then use uh, some uh, inference algorithm to try to uh, achieve this uh, inference goal. So of course that if you want to pick, of course that this type, type of a constraint is not only uh, appear in just a, a one data instance, but you need to actually 
make the prediction of the entire corpus in order to compute this uh, predicted ratio. So uh, you need to actually solve uh, all these uh, inference problem of all the instant at once in order uh, to uh, solve this type of constraint inference problem. So this is definitely a very difficult problem to solve. However, uh, if we don't looking for the exact solution, we can actually uh, use the Lagrange realization uh, technique uh, to break down this uh, giant inference problem into small pieces. And then we can actually use the inference algorithm we use in the original model uh, in order to make the prediction. So I'm going to skip uh, some of this detail, but basically uh, you can uh, write this uh, inference problem uh, into this uh, Lagrange uh, 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 formulation. And then you can uh, basically alternatively uh, update uh, your prediction assignment and also this uh, Lagrange multiplier. And then iteratively, then you can solve this uh, inference problem. So let me just show you the result. So uh, before uh, you apply this uh, bias mitigation technique, uh, as we showed before, uh, the model uh, will amplify the bias. So you can see there are a lot of the rate points that are not satisfied with that constraint and uh, the bias is uh, somehow amplified. But when you apply uh, this uh, uh, Lagrange uh, realization technique to enforce the uh, constraint into the model, and as I see, as I say that uh, this is not an exact uh, algorithm, so you will still have uh, some uh, violation point uh, like I show in here. But you, as you can see that now uh, the prediction is much more closer to the reference line. So the bias uh, is uh, significantly uh, mitigated. So this is an algorithm that we can use to reduce the bias in the top prediction. And if you are concerning about the bias is amplified uh, in the distribution, then we can also use another similar technique called the posterior regularization in order to reduce the bias. So again, I'm going to skip uh, the mathematical detail, but basically the high level idea is you can define this uh, constraint set as this uh, 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 as this uh, uh, orange bar, uh, orange uh, shape showing here, that this feasible set will basically uh, define all the prediction point that is uh, satisfied uh, with the constraint in the sense that uh, the prediction ratio is very similar to the ratio you see in the training set. And uh, previously, when the model make a prediction, uh, the model may uh, violate a lot of this constraint. So this is not inside this uh, feasible set. But we can uh, using some uh, optimization algorithm to learn a projection of this uh, model prediction to a point in the feasible set that is most uh, closest uh, to this uh, pace theta uh, based on the, the uh, KL uh, divergence distance. And by applying that, and then we can uh, actually change uh, the prediction uh, distribution of the, uh, of the test data and in order to get a prediction that is satisfied um, mostly with those constraints. So in fact, this is a more easier uh, to reduce uh, the bias amplification uh, in the distribution uh, situation. And as you can see that uh, once you apply this uh, uh, posterior regularization algorithm, now we can uh, almost uh, make all these uh, violating point inside uh, this uh, small margin. So now you can actually calibrate the model in a way that the model has a very similar prediction uh, distribution uh, like you see in the training data. So this may not solve all the uh, issue, but at least uh, you can mitigate a uh, certain obvious uh, bias that is uh, amplified uh, in this uh, prediction process. Okay, so uh, finally, I would like to uh, discuss uh, some technical view of this uh, algorithm fairness uh, framework. And, and some of the things I'm saying is a bit uh, controversial. And also uh, there are different uh, way and different things that people has been discussing about how can we uh, more make the AI system more ethical and make uh, algorithm more fair. So a lot of the discussion are from the uh, philosophical discussion that what should we do and what is the right thing to do. But here I want to share, uh, share some of my thoughts uh, from a more technical point of view and treat uh, this uh, fairness problem as more kind of a problem of an AI system that make uh, some systematic error 
and then how can we use some machine learning and non NLP technique in order uh, to mitigate this kind of problem? So uh, one thing I want to argue is that uh, the issue of the fairness is not just like one single problem. It's actually a spectrum of a different type of an issue. And also we need to have a full spectrum of the tool that to reduce the bias in this model. So as I uh, discussed uh, before, that there are several uh, different places in this uh, uh, NLP pipeline could uh, introduce uh, the bias into the model. For example, the data and uh, the auxiliary corpus that use uh, to represent uh, a certain NLP component could be biased. So there is a reporting bias that uh, the data may be uh, uh, over uh, amplify a certain type of data. Also, there is a problem of a diversity that we may collect the data mostly uh, for a certain group of people and ignore another group of people. And then when we train the model uh, learn from that data, the model may also have some representation harms in the sense that the model may over associate certain concept with uh, a certain uh, implicit bias. And uh, for some situation, this is a signal we want to use to making the prediction. But for some other sensitive uh, application, we may not want to use these kind of features. And then we put all these uh, uh, components together as a, a AI system, the bias can be amplified as I showed you before. And this is kind of a, a more like fundamental machine learning problem that uh, the model is uh, uh, poorly calibrate uh, the distribution in the data so that it causing this type of problem. And if you consider the whole thing as a whole, there's also a lot of type of uh, problem that we need to consider when we build an AI system that uh, if the uh, application that we design is ethical, that do we really want to build a, a system that predict a job hopping uh, from the interview data. And also we need to know what is the limitation of the model. And this is also associated with a lot of discussion uh, in the community about how can we make uh, this uh, model design or the development of the AI model more transparent. Uh, for example, I will point to uh, a paper by uh, Meg Michel about the model car that's showing that we should actually uh, provide a, a, spec, a spec of the model and showing what is the limitation of what is um, uh, uh, the model is useful. So uh, from another dimension to think about these problems that we, we, if we want to uh, build a technique that to mitigate the bias, then we also need to think about a different type of a tool uh, in this uh, full spectrum. So uh, we can design some technique is more general that you can plug in and play. And hopefully that uh, people uh, uh, like a developer using, developer using this uh, AI uh, technology can easily just use them and to avoid uh, uh, amplify certain type of bias. Like for example, we can try to reduce the bias uh, in the word embedding model and tell people that if you are working on some uh, specific uh, sensitive uh, application, then you should use this type of word embedding rather than the general purpose word embedding. But on the other spectrum, there are also a lot of problems is more application specific. For example, uh, this is uh, 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 how the Google uh, reduce the bias in the translation system. So previous, previously people showed that if you translate a sentence that uh, he is a daughter or she is a daughter, uh, to a language uh, that you don't have a gender pronoun like Turkish. And then when you translate back, then the model will going to guess what is the gender of that pronoun, right? And the model will more likely to say uh, he is daughter than she is a daughter. So that kind of showing the bias in the translation system. So the simple fix uh, by the Google is uh, to generate uh, two translation. So one is a feminine, another is a masculine. And in that way, uh, both situation will be considered. So for this one, this is a very application specific and uh, you can actually resolve the issue easily, but uh, this is uh, uh, not going to be general uh, for other type of uh, application. So uh, we are arguing that uh, we need to have uh, this all different type of uh, uh, bias uh, detection and, uh, uh, and uh, mitigation technique that uh, we can uh, have a whole spectrum of a tool and use them uh, to uh, persuade the development uh, in different uh, level of uh, development, development stack uh, to uh, reduce the bias in the AI system. 
So uh, the other thing uh, I want to say is that uh, this is kind of problem cannot be easily uh, solved. So like we cannot simply uh, just say we want to build the AI system and achieve 100% correct prediction. It is also very difficult to reduce uh, the bias uh, in all these uh, different type of AI system. So for example, uh, there are several uh, papers show that uh, even in some matrix that we show the bias is mighty good. But if you change uh, the way you evaluate the system, then you can see this is still a significant bias show up in the, in the, in the model. So for example, uh, this paper showed that uh, even we have uh, some method that we can reduce the bias in the word invading, but if you use the clustering algorithm and you find that the clustering algorithm are still able to identify uh, the bias uh, in the word invading. And another uh, concern is that there are several different uh, fairness criteria. And sometimes these criteria are not inconsistent. And the only time that when all of them can be satisfied is the time that all the predictions are correct. And we all know it is a very difficult to make all the predictions are correct. So in that sense, this is a very difficult and almost impossible to make sure that we have a system that can satisfy uh, all different type of uh, fairness criteria. And the other thing uh, that is a limitation is that uh, many of these uh, techniques we can discover are based on the data we have and the notation we have. So they may not be able to cover all type of bias. So for example, when we talk about the gender bias, in all the experiments uh, I showed before, I somehow can uh, identify uh, the bias of uh, uh, linguistic gender in some sense. So this is a bias toward that when you have a sentence, have a female pronoun she comparing to male pronoun he, but that cannot be actually solve some uh, more subtle problem that uh, they are transgender and also uh, they are more than binary gender. So, they, so even we can able to uh, solve the, the bias toward the binary gender, they're still not able to solve uh, the bias toward general uh, gender uh, bias. So finally, I want to uh, share the thought of uh, this uh, fairness issue is also a technical issue. So most of the time, the model making uh, the bias prediction is because the model uses uh, wrong features. So for example, in this uh, correct uh, example, I just show you that we hope the model don't use this uh, gender uh, association with occupation as a feature, but actually use the right feature that is the end of this sentence and use a common sense in order to solve this problem. So, uh, so that is why uh, when we uh, reduce uh, the association between uh, the gender pronoun and the occupation word in the word embedding space, now the bias can be somehow uh, mitigated. It is because we force the model uh, to ignore certain feature and focus on the right feature that should be used uh, to uh, solve the problem. And another thing we find that a lot of time, this is a fairness issue is also caused by the model are not robust. And uh, because there are some smoke perturbation can lead uh, the prediction change. So if you make the model more robust uh, in the sense that uh, if you change uh, the use of word or change the gender mentioned uh, in the sentence uh, and will not change the prediction at the end, then somehow that model can be less biased. And also, like I said before, there is also a technical question here. The model are poorly calibrated, causing this uh, bias amplification. So how can we make the model and or change some objective of the mod, uh, model learning in order to make the model better calibrate? And that would be also an interesting issue to discuss. Finally, uh, one uh, uh, reason that the model would make uh, some bias decision or say something that uh, 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 offensive is because the model lack of a common sense. So if we are able to uh, enhance the model with some common sense knowledge, tell the model what should be said, what should not be said, also what uh, association is uh, uh, always true and what association is just some uh, statistic uh, association, then the model will be much better in resolving this kind of issue. And also I want to emphasize that uh, a lot of this fairness issue is not uh, just causing by the data is biased. This is more beyond the bias data. And of course, we want to make the data uh, less biased and in order to uh, fix this uh, pipeline. But there are also many other issues in this pipeline that we need to consider. Okay, so uh, with this, I will going to uh, leave uh, this uh, conclusion here. 
And if you are interested in my work, uh, you can uh, look at my web page. And as I said, uh, we have uh, all this uh, code and data uh, share uh, in my web page. And I'm happy to uh, take a, a question now. Uh, hi, Kaiwei. Uh, I uh, just want to come back uh, while I had a few moments. Um, and it looks like there are no questions. Um, so sadly, I wasn't able to be on here as much as I wanted to be. Uh, so I, I don't think I, I, I would be the right person to ask questions. But does anyone else here have any questions? Uh, sure, sure. Oh, oh, yeah. no, go, okay. go ahead, Christina. I have a one-on-one. -on -one. All right. Um, I wonder if your results. I mean, we can just, we'll talk more during our one-on-one. -on -one, but uh, we. I wonder how those results might generalize. How to generalize them beyond gender? For example, you know, political bias. You know, liberal versus conservative. Do you think all of these things that you have discussed in the method approaches you're discussing will be able will generalize to these other types of biases that exist? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. So. Uh, like, like I uh, show here, I think uh, for some of the thing I did is uh, generalizable uh, to a certain type of other bias. And for some others is more specific uh, for the gender bias. So for example, for the word embedding that uh, not only uh, our word, but also others showing that uh, certain race bias and some political bias is also enhanced in this word embedding. And also, uh, for example, for the relation instruction, I believe that uh, we, we also conduct the experiment on the gender bias, but uh, I think that could be also uh, generalized uh, to other type of bias. But was it just, uh, you think just class balance is the one that amplifies the, the bias? Uh, uh, I think it's probably more than uh, the, the, the class balance. It's also uh, due to the, the you know, different frequency of a co-occurrence with a certain word appear uh, in the data. Mm -hmm. And that one will, will cause in certain type of bias. Yeah, and also, I mean, when I say bias, it could be something like, uh, there are some implicit association that we don't want uh, to use in our model's prediction, right? So that can be uh, anything that is uh, somehow implicitly association uh, appear in the training data then can cause in, uh, some uh, unwanted prediction that we, 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 we see in the test time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I look forward to talking to you more about this um, later yeah. on today. Yeah, I think that is a very interesting issue and I also look forward to the discussion. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so the next person, I didn't catch who else wanted to talk. John Meng. Uh, yeah, oh. I also have a one-on-one, -on -one, but okay, I'll, I'll just use one of my questions now. Um, uh, all right, so let's let's just throw throw you know fuel on the fire. All right, so so you're uh, uh, a source of bias that's sort of um, a kind of a meta angle and is not something that you can necessarily solve with modeling, but more in terms of the choice of what to work on. Um, mm -hmm. Is that you know the much of this work is much of all of our work honestly is targeted towards so-called weird societies, Western educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic. Um, the language choice for one thing, and the you know the kinds of topics and, and you know the the sorts of problems that we're addressing, and uh, uh, but a concern that I see is that a lot of the data mitigation uh, issues or a lot of the mitigation issues require kind of substantial data, and when you get down to stuff for which because of various societal factors not much data has been collected or annotated, then you have the problem where if you even wanted to to expand your uh, your reach, you would be faced with a much more exacerbated um, uh, bias problem in the data or just an uncorrectable problem. And so I wonder if you could say something about how we're going to solve that problem. Yeah, that's a very, very good question. Yeah, that's also a, a, a lot of thing I was uh, recently uh, thinking of and also related to uh, the, the thing I was saying here that this is kind of problem that we don't actually expect that we can solve them uh, easily. And uh, it's like common sense, right? It's uh, actually uh, a pretty broad, and also uh, the issue came from uh, several different angles. But what we can uh, help is that because uh, first we can uh, we can uh, let the people who are building all these AI systems more aware of this issue, 
And for a uh, large company and also for many different research uh, projects, then if people know there is a bias uh, causing several different type of harm, then uh, they may have the uh, resources to annotate more data and also to analyze a uh, certain type of uh, bias also to uh, make their system more inclusive, right? So for example, uh, for the uh, most of uh, these uh, AI uh, uh, application provider, they, they, they do hope that their system can be inclusive and can be used uh, by different uh, people from different demographics, also by uh, have a different type of uh, mistake, right? Like uh, having a uh, user with uh, usually have a grammar mistake, for example. So uh, once the issue is there, then they may have uh, that resources to annotate the data and also to uh, to do this kind of analysis. And then also they may have a way uh, to uh, mitigate a certain type of bias uh, by annotating the data. So I think that is a uh, one point. But on the other hand, that uh, if we don't have a lot of data, then uh, there would also uh, the question that can we identify uh, those bias without using the data, but just do something uh, unsupervisedly. So uh, this is uh, uh, related uh, to a wonderful project I did with uh, Fred that we want to identify these uh, 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 group bias appear in the data. And, and then we can find out uh, there are certain like group of region uh, have a or certain different thing have a certain bias uh, without actually have a, a data annotation. And that's also kind of a, a motivate why we want to do these uh, experiments on identify this type of a local bias. Yeah, but I mean, overall I would frankly say that I don't know the right answer because uh, this is actually a very difficult problem. And I guess this will actually need uh, people from different community to sit together in order to think of what is the best solution. Great, thank you so much, Kaiwei. Um, it seems that we're out of time, uh, so I'm afraid uh, any more questions should be uh, done one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but again, I, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to present here. Uh, it was a very, very informative talk, even though I was only able to see part of it. Um, and uh, with that, uh, I think, uh, Peter, uh, you could stop recording now.